Tonight, we're talking about the birds and the bees. And don't worry, it's not that awkward lesson you had back in junior high health class. Tonight, it's about native plants and the vital role they play in your local ecosystem. Right now, I'm in the backyard of a local Center County resident who planted this native garden last year, and it wasn't just for the plants. The reason for native garden is the fact that we wanted to increase the, let me say the biodiversity, but to have a number of different bugs and insect, you know, insects in the yard have things like butterflies and bees. And you know, one of the main things that we started with was to have more birds. But, but that really starts with having a lot of the, the different types of plants that the insects can feed on as well as the birds can feed on. What many people don't realize is that insects and bees are actually good for your garden. That's because they pollinate, and pollination plays an important role in our local ecosystems. According to Penn State's Department of Entomology, 75% of our food crops require animal-mediated pollination, as do 80 to 95% of non-agricultural plants found in natural habitats. Plants and insects have evolved together, so you absolutely have to have the native plants to have the insects to have the birds. And so once you have that basis, it's just a, it's a spiral upward of, of, your, of a healthy ecosystem. Bees play an active role in that ecosystem, and yet their population is declining. Researchers feel this is due to a variety of factors, including urbanization as well as a warming climate. A way to help that is to plant natives that will attract the bees, something not everyone is comfortable with, since some bees have a bad reputation. Native bees are not the aggressive stingers, but if you walk through this garden, there's like literally hundreds of bees here and no one has ever been stung here. They're just, they're just focused on pollinating, which then not only helps our flowers, but that helps our crops. So what is a native plant? According to the Pennsylvania Native Plant Society, it's one that occurs naturally in a particular region, system, or habitat without direct or indirect human intervention. Plants that were already located in eastern North America before the European settlers arrived are considered native. They have adapted to the local growing conditions. And it's area specific, so um, you can't go by a U.S. native because what is native in Pennsylvania is not native in the Rocky Mountains. Even though we might have similar climate, it's, it's, it's different. If you're interested in planting natives now, early fall is the time to do it. Start small. You can start with taking out some invasive plants in your, in your garden, some non-natives, just putting in some natives. Maybe take a, out a little piece of lawn. I think when people start this, it doesn't have to, you know, be a big giant garden. It could be a small little area that, that's put in first and, you know, to see how everything grows. And then you can kind of expand it. And that's pretty much what I've done here. You know, I started off with this, you know, set number of plants that I got in clearance. Uh, and then as time has gone on, I've added, you know, different plants in, either that I've seen at the, you know, the different garden stores. Um, or ones that I've read about. It turns out that removing part of your lawn has benefits other than less time spent mowing. Another big one is erosion control. So you have your grass, maybe the roots go down two inches or so. Um, a lot of these native plants, their roots go down a couple feet. So especially now when the storms seem to be stronger and shorter, you get a lot of rain at once, it's gonna run off the grass. Here, at least with the longer root system, some of the water finds its way down those root canals and it can, it can really help with the, with the runoff. Another thing to note, if you already have native plants in your garden, don't give in to the pressure to clean things out later this season. And it's not for the plant's sake. You want the leaf litter, a lot of the native plants have hollow stems and they will lay their, they're either hibernate in there, they'll lay their eggs in there. And if you're cutting them down, composting, you're, you're killing off that pollinator. And also in the spring, you need to wait till 
at least probably the end of April um, to clean up because they need to come out of hibernation. Those neat eggs need to hatch. So you have to wait long enough to do that. No matter what season it is, you can find native plants in bloom. That's why some garden enthusiasts prefer this type of gardening. You know, I think the nice thing is the fact that we do get something blooming at different times of the season. So it's not like everything is gonna bloom all at the same time, but rather it's, they, they gradually come in and go out of bloom, you know, as the native plants do. And the nice thing is the fact that it does provide that ongoing, you know, not only color for us to look at, but, you know, also for the bees and the butterflies to have something to, you know, to, to eat. So what you plant today isn't just for show. I think the really fun part about having native plants is that you can make a difference. Like your backyard can make a difference. It's something that, that just can have a tremendous impact. If you'd like to be a part of that impact and learn more about native plants, check out the Pennsylvania Native Plant Society's website. But be careful, it could be more of a buzz than you were expecting. For Weather World, I'm Marissa Ferger.